Welcome to How to Have Fun Cruising. That's right, folks. If you love cruising, if you love cruise tips, if you like walkthroughs, if you love shore excursions, you found your cruise channel. That's right. Aliche and Tommy T here to show you around. And today we've got a extra special video for you. That's right. The cruise port in Cape Canaveral. So many of the cruise lines are now coming out of this uh, port. And guess what, folks? You've got the Kennedy Space Center there. That's right. Today's video is all about a shore excursion before or after your cruise. That's right, you can go to the Kennedy Space Center and it is absolutely amazing. We've got 10 tips for you today. If you could, hit that like button. It would help us uh, get this video out to everyone. And uh, no question about it, we give this a five out of five. It is an awesome amusement park. It is actually a uh, educational and entertainment center also. And folks, you're gonna absolutely love it there. Your kids are gonna love it. Everybody's gonna love it. So we highly recommend it. So definitely subscribe. It would mean so much to us. And let's get started from the Kennedy Space Center. Started nine to six, that's right. You wanna explore this. And tip number one, buy your tickets online. Don't stand in line like everybody else. Time is the enemy here. Let's get into that amusement park. Buy your tickets in advance. You're gonna be happy you did. You just go right on through like you see here and have some fun in that park. All right, are you ready, Liche? Yes, yeah, so we kind of wait to explore the Space Center. Okay, tip number two. That's right, get to the park early. Everything is about time. There's so many displays, lots of great shows, and some of these destinations you actually have to jump on a bus. So time flies by. Every time I go to this amusement park, I'm never able to get to all the rides and shows. So definitely do your best to get there early to get a full day so you can see everything. There is so much to see. This is one great venue. All right, right here is the daily schedule. Very important that when you arrive at the park, grab one of these. I learned this from my mother years ago when I was just a toddler running around Disney and everywhere else. This show, this park is all about the shows. So right here is all the different shows and the times they're available. You wanna get this as early as you can and get going. You can check out all the displays at any time, but you don't wanna miss any of the shows. So let's go and have some fun here at the Kennedy Space Center. Let's talk a little bit about the Space Center itself. That's right, it's originally known as the SNASA Launch Operations Center on Merritt Island in Florida. It's one of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, which is NASA, 10 field centers. That's right, since December of 68, this has been NASA's primary launch center of human space flight, and there's really no place like it. You're definitely gonna wanna check it out. Since 2010, the center has worked to become the multi-user spaceport throughout the industry partnerships, even adding new launch pads uh, as late as 2015. So overall, when you look at this facility, you will see there's tons of displays like we discussed. And one of the really cool things, after you figure out your agenda and what shows you're gonna hit, you just enter the park here, as you can see. And one of our big tips for everyone is to focus in on that Heroes and Legends. That's gonna be the focus for tip number three. The otherwise, if you wait, the line gets very long. So if you hit it early, you can knock that out. Enter the park, you definitely want to hit this Heroes and Legends. It's not really a ride, it's more of an attraction. And uh, it's amazing the amount of history in this particular pavilion. Um, you get to relive the thrills and danger of America's earliest space missions and embark on some awe-inspiring journeys designed to really get your kids excited. Uh, you basically experience the dawn of the spa space age with astronaut pioneers through actual artifacts, including the Redstone rocket, um, which is huge, and you'll see that in this video, along with some really cool Sigma 7 capsules and unique close-up look at the Gemini 9 capsule. This is the Redstone uh, rocket, as you can see here, the Mercury Atlas, and this is pretty awesome. This actually got people up in the space, and uh, as you can see here, lots of cool displays and really neat things to see. And uh, let's see how Aliche's liking it. How did you get on the rocket? Uh, I don't know, but I am ready to go in the space. Okay. So just get ready yourself. Three, two, one, go. Boom. 
So overall, this attraction takes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. So you can see there's so much to view and look at. And some of these displays, like the spacesuit and other things, are just phenomenal. And quite honestly, um, the other thing that everyone should be aware of is that um, you do have this included with the mission. Uh, it does have wheelchair access. There are availables uh, or elevators available. And uh, as you can see here, you can get up and close with these capsules, which is pretty awesome. In addition to all of these displays and all the history that you learn in this part of the museum, you also, believe it or not, uh, have what's referred to as the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame. And this is super cool. Envisioned as a place where American astronauts are remembered and honored. Um, this thing was actually created by the Mercury 7 astronauts and the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame inductees are selected by a special committee every year. Okay, mom and dad, you're gonna love tip number five. That's right, save the rocket garden for free time or the end of the day. And the reason why, when you come out of that Hero and Legends Pavilion, the rockets are all right there. The kids are gonna wanna go there. Everybody's gonna wanna check it out. It is awesome, no question about it, but there's no lines for this. There's no admission, there's none of that stuff. This is just an outdoor garden, so you can go here at any time. So you're much better off leaving that pavilion, heading back to the back part of the park, and hitting some of the other rides as quickly as possible. But we're gonna show you some of those rockets right now and uh, it is pretty awesome. And stay tuned for tip number six. All right, what's the most expensive thing in the store? It is an actual meteorite that was found in Argentina. It is 28.6 kilograms and is $13,000. $13,000, you guys sell it right here? Uh, yes, not very often, but once in a while we do. That is awesome, thanks so much. This is awesome, I loved it. Check it out. Okay, we've got your next tip. Tip number six, bring extra dollars for souvenirs. And we're not joking. They have all kinds of souvenir shops. And what was really impressive was the amount of items and all the different toys and shirts and games. And I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's, I think they've even outdone Disney or the famous online science-themed gift store, labratgifts.com. But you definitely want to check out Space Shops. And also, over in the Apollo 5 section, definitely don't miss the right stuff. This is another huge souvenir shop with all kinds of stuff. And this one's impressive. They had space suits for kids and toys and all kinds of cool stuff. You're definitely going to want to bring some money. And uh, the kids are going to go nutso in these places. It is a lot of fun. Okay, for your next tip, behind the gates. That's right, tip number seven. You're going to want to go straight over to the bus tours where you're going to get a trip out beyond the gates for the Apollo and Saturn V Center. And boy, oh boy, this is awesome. You get exclusive access to the historical launch sites and operational spaceflight facilities. That's right, this is included with your daily admission. On the tour, you're gonna go behind NASA's gates to see the past, present, and future of the America's multi-user spaceport before visiting the one and only Apollo and Saturn V Center. You're gonna freak out when you see that. It is really Remarkable. For the comfort, safety, and viewing pleasure of all our guests. This next tip may seem silly, but it's really important. You need to block up to three hours uh, depending on how much time you spend on this tour. And quite honestly, uh, they have snacks available there, gift shop, shopping, and uh, once you get in these pavilions and see the rockets and all the attractions, uh, you end up spending a lot more time there than you would think. So it's really important to balance this along with the other show schedule. Um, but overall, this is included in your pass and it does have wheelchair access and uh, it is quite remarkable. This is 
what I think is the pinnacle of the entire visit for the day. And we're gonna show you the rest of this uh, um, overall attraction and you'll see that uh, you get to see some pretty amazing stuff. So when you're on this three hour behind the gates trip, um, it's easy to say, I'm gonna skip the Lunar Theater and get back to the main part of the park. That is a mistake. So that's why we're telling you tip number nine is not to skip the Lunar Theater because it's not just a show, which is pretty remarkable to be honest, but it is a ton of space displays that you are definitely gonna wanna check out from capsules to spacesuits to all kinds of memorabilia that you're not gonna see in other parts of the park. So do not skip this one. You'll really, really enjoy it. And the amount of history with NASA and the space program is truly remarkable. And you're gonna enjoy these exhibits. <laughs> So the Astrovan was super cool. As you look through here, you can see where the astronauts actually sat before they got onto the spaceship. And that is really amazing. Definitely when you're in this area, also check out, as we mentioned earlier, more souvenir shops with tons of stuff like you have never seen before. But overall, we love this exhibit. There was no question about it. They did a great job. And if you're hungry, they've got the Moon Rock Cafe. And this is a nice pit stop as you spend so much time in this area. And then from there, you bust yourself all the way back to the main amusement park. And uh, you get to go by some of these great launch pad areas, which is truly remarkable when you see the scale of buildings like this. Uh, it really is mind boggling. The video just doesn't show it. All right, let's talk about Space Shuttle Atlantis. Tip number 10, that's right. This is a must see attraction. It was our favorite attraction in all of the Kennedy Space Center. And you're gonna see why in a minute. It was super impressive. Definitely you cannot miss this in the stuff of dreams. That's right, Aliche had to do a little bit of uh, romance in this video. But in any case, take a look at this. The scale of this uh, pavilion and all of the shows that were a part of it were really remarkable. But overall, it was our favorite uh, uh, attraction. And here you go. We're going to play some music and show you this incredible adventure of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. You're going to love this.
Six years, 33 missions, 207 astronauts, and this was one incredible program. The space shuttle program ended in 2011, and I bet you didn't know this thing was larger than a six-bedroom house, had the volume of a 747, and was really an incredible spaceship. And there's really never been anything like it. It really is something to see in real life at this attraction at the Kennedy Space Center. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely hit the Kennedy Space Center next time you're at Port Canaveral. And please hit that like button and subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching How to Have Fun Cruising!